This slide summarizes the equations that used to determine the size of the plate girdle. It comprises three main parts: the web, the flank, and the stiffener. These equations are derived on the basis of the critical aspect as stated in our previous video and also on the basis of the assumptions of the method 1 where the moment is assumed to be resisted by the flank only. First, we try to estimate the size of the web. Considering that the flank induced buckling is going to be passed for the web, this equation is required and assuming that the moment is resisted by the flank only, this leads to these equations. The lambda here represents the ratio of HW per TW. This is the exact ratio that used in the flank induced buckling. You may solve these two equations simultaneously so that to obtain the HW and TW. Next, we estimate the size of the flank. It is assumed that the moment is resisted by the flank only. That gives the member with the equations for moment as given here, which is the area of the flank multiply the U strength multiply the lever arm. The lever arm is considered as the height of the web ignoring the thickness of the flank itself. As this entire process is an estimation, therefore, precise value is not necessary. The area of the flank it will be the thickness of the flank multiply the width of the flank. And the width of the flank is assumed to be equals to 2C. Again, since it is uh, estimations, the thickness of the web is also ignored. As for the C, the C is determined on basis of the member is considered in the category of class 1. With that, for the class 1, the limiting C per T flank it should be equal to 9 epsilon. And this epsilon is determined by the steel grade of the flank. Then this moment resistance should be the targeted moment capacity of the member. With that, you will be able to estimate an appropriate size of the flank. When you estimate the size of the web, you assume there is no existence of the stiffener. When you assume the size of the flank, you assume that the web is not contributing to moment resistance. This assumption should give you a conservative estimation of the size of the member. Next, we look into the estimation for the stiffener. First, you need to determine the clear distance between the stiffeners. As a designer, you may propose yourself. Divide the spacing between stiffeners with the height of the web. Check against whether it is less than square root 2 or if it is more than square root 2. The requirement for its second moment or inertia it will be de deferred based on the different conditions here. The second moment or inertia is calculated by the thickness of the stiffeners multiply the width of the stiffener power 3 divided by 12. This is a typical second moment of inertia of a member. With that, you should be able to determine or propose a size for the web, for the flank and also for the stiffener.